animal kingdom with this part two. Then go on to announcements and other things so that we can move on to our meeting. Sunday evening, I had spoken on this for about close to an hour, and I did not want to go on speaking more than an hour. To recap, in Genesis chapter 2, God says to man, I've given you dominion, and God was looking for a suitable mate for man. And he brought the animals to Adam and said, Adam, name all the animals. Adam starts to give them their names, lion, tiger, elephant, snake, whatever. So Adam gave them their names. But none of those animals were suitable for Adam. And God said, wow, I need to put Adam in a deep sleep, take out his rib, and create woman for him. So God did that. Adam woke up and said, wow, she was taken out of man. I would name her woman. So Adam had the responsibility to name the animals. Amen. When you name something, you have authority over that thing. Amen. So he named them their names. Amen. Now the Bible said in Genesis chapter 3 that the serpent was the most crafty of all the animals. The serpent. And it was the serpent that Satan used to cause the downfall of man. Last Sunday, we looked at the characters of the various animals, and we want to conclude today. Obviously, we cannot look at all the animals in the universe, but we've looked at some strategic ones and want to continue. I want us to turn in our Bible to Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. <coughs> verse 28 Matthew 24 verse 28 wherever the corpse is there the vultures will gather wherever the corpse is there the vultures will gather now there is the spirit of the vulture and you need to know whether you have a vulture around you catch one thing the vulture is not responsible for the death of its prey. The vulture is not the one that initiates the death of the prey. Another animal or another event is responsible for the death of the prey. The vulture just comes to feed after the prey is dead. So the vulture watches and waits. It's a very patient bird. It will wait for that animal to take its last breath before it strikes. Now, there can be vultures around you. The vulture around you will not kill you, but he's waiting for you or something in you to die. I give you an example. You could have husband and wife in a relationship and their relationship is going through turbulence. And the vulture is just waiting for that relationship to die. So as soon as that relationship dies, he can pick up the corpse. And start a relationship with the other spouse. It's not the vulture that killed the relationship, but the vulture is just waiting for an opportune time for that relationship to collapse. And if care is not taken, in our sphere of influence can lurk a vulture. The vulture is not happy when you are glowing with life. Because the more you glow with life, you are a threat to his meal. That means he's not going to have supper. And so the vulture will be praying for a quick demise. So the vulture, the spirit of the vulture is that spirit that waits for everything to collapse. Acts like a friend. You will know he's not the one that caused your problem. And if care is not taken, you go and confide in him or her. Because he's not the one that caused your problem. She's not the one that caused your problem. And you're confiding in the one that is just waiting for your problem to kill you. And you must have discernment to know who is a vulture around you. That's why you see sometimes you get a promotion. 
and your best friend is not happy. God lifts you up and people around you are not happy. That could as well be a vulture. Amen. Amen. So Christ is describing his second coming. They are asking him about the second coming. He says where the carcass is, that is where the vultures gather. Amen. They don't gather, vultures don't gather where there is life. You don't gather where there is life. Vultures always gather where something is about to die. And the vulture is like the eagle. Its eyesight is phenomenal. From far, it can sight the corpse. And you just be waiting for the opportune time. That is the spirit of the vulture. And you pray for those around you to succeed. Or are you praying for them to fail? If you're praying for them to fail, that is the spirit of the vulture. Amen. Yes. Amen. That is the spirit of the vulture. Amen. You're praying for them to fail. You don't do anything to orchestrate or accelerate their failure. But inwardly, you're just waiting. So that when they fail, you can strike. And you say, I told you. I told you so. That is the vulture. And in the Old Testament, the Bible makes it clear that the vulture is an unclean bird. It's an unclean bird. So when you see yourself dreaming about that kind of bird, it means that death is locking. It means that death is locking. It doesn't necessarily mean a physical death, but it could be death to a business, to a relationship, but that bird is just waiting for death. Amen. Animal kingdom, part two. Let's move on. Then there is the snail. The Bible doesn't tell us anything about the snail. But one thing you will notice about the snail is that it is a very slow animal. Not only is it slow, it's very fragile. The kind of shell that God gave it it's not even sufficient enough to protect it if it has a fall. If the tortoise or tortoise or turtle should have a fall, the kind of back that they have can protect them from the fall. Who understand what I'm saying? But the snail, its shell is like an eggshell. You just have a little fall and crack. So not only is this animal slow, it is vulnerable. So to have the spirit of the snail, to have the anointing of the snail confers on you a slowness coupled with a vulnerability. You see, there are some animals that are very vulnerable, but they're fast. Mm -hmm. So you can't catch them. Yeah. So you can't catch them. So when there's trouble, they come. Because they have speed. But this is an animal that was not blessed with speed. And sometimes we see, if we're not careful, you see that snail, it is associated with stagnation, with limitation, because it will take its years for it to change its environment. What a dog, where a dog can go in three minutes, it could take a snail days, days, and by the time it gets there, the blessing has gone. There are people that get to the promised place, but by the time they get to the promise. The blessing is no more there. Because the anointing of the snail is upon them. Yes, Every animal, it is associated with stagnation. With limitation. Because it will take its years for it to change its environment. What a dog, where a dog can go in three minutes. It could take a snail days. Days. And by the time it gets there, the blessing has gone. There are people that get to the promised place. But by the time they get to the promise, the blessing is no more there. Because the anointing of the snail is upon them. Every animal has a characteristic. Has some have more than one characteristic, but you must know what is the predominant characteristic of that animal. So you have the snail. 
Bible doesn't talk about it. But you can learn from it. From its vulnerability and its slowness. There's another animal that is slow. But very wise. The ant. The Bible tells us about the ant. As small as it is, it is very organized and hardworking. The ants cooperate with themselves. They cooperate with themselves. Not every animal does that. Human beings don't do that. Human beings will eat until their belly is full before they call the next person to come and eat. But the ants, they work together in a team. As small as they are, in summer they are saving for winter. And the Bible says, go learn from the ants. Animal Kingdom, part two. On Sunday, we went to the zoo. We just concluded our study so that we can move on. I'd rather be an ant than a snail. Let us turn in the Bible to Revelation chapter 16, verse 13. Revelation chapter 16, I read verse 13 and 14. Verse 13 will suffice. And I saw three foul spirits, unclean spirits, like frogs, coming from the mouth of the dragon, from the mouth of the beast, and from the mouth of the false prophet. These three foul spirits, these three unclean spirits, are likened unto frogs. When God wanted to punish Pharaoh, he sent frogs to his land. He sent frogs inside the palace. Sent frogs into his bedroom in the palace. And Pharaoh had to send for Moses and say, this is too much. And the Bible says when, they, when that plague was over, and they made a pile of the frogs, it was a stinking smell. Unclean. I don't know of people that really keep frogs as a pet. Maybe some do. People are weird these days. <laughs> but that is associated with uncleanness. So when you see these animals, and of course, in a dream, it depends on the context. So I'm not just saying once you see this, it is that. You would also have to look at the context and ask the Holy Spirit to interpret. One interesting animal we would look at and then we would close this because it's not what we have for tonight. I just wanted to bring this to a close. We will find that animal in Isaiah 42. Oh, sorry, Psalm 42. Psalm 42. As a deer longs for flowing streams, so my soul longs for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and behold the face of God? As a deer longed after the water brooks, so my soul longed after thee. The deer is an animal that is thirsty for water because it does a lot of work. So it is thirsty. And the Bible is lightening the deer to he that tested for living water. When you see the woman at the well in John chapter 4, Jesus says, I am the living water. If you drink from me, you will thirst no more. I am the one that can satisfy your thirst. So when you see a deer, the deer is that animal that tests for water. Now, one kind of deer is the antelope. And the deer is very different from the goat. The deer is very different from the goat. Let us go to Proverbs 6, verse 5. Maybe we'll close there because of time. There are other pressing matters for the night. Proverbs 6, verse 5. Save yourself like a gazelle from the hunter, like a bird from the hand of the fowler. 
The Bible says, save yourself like a gazelle. A gazelle is a deer, an antelope. You see, when the gazelle is caught in a trap, all it is thinking about is his deliverance. Somebody hear what I'm saying? When the gazelle, the deer is in a trap, all his mind is set upon is his deliverance. He wants to get out of that trap, period. But if you put a goat in the same trap, and you bring grass, the goat is ready to eat and stay in the trap. Amen. The goat does not mind spending years in the trap, so long as you bring grass to it every day to feed. The gazelle has a different character, because the gazelle is an animal that likes to skip, to jump. That's why it's always thirsty for water. So he wasn't made to stay in the same place and eat grass. And there are many in the body of Christ, they are in Satan's trap, and they are content with grass. Every day, Satan gives them grass and they are happy. There are many on welfare. They can get off welfare. They can pick up themselves by the bootstraps. But the next welfare check comes and they are content. And they don't understand that that might as well be a trap to keep them in perpetual bondage. If you put a goat outside the trap, and you bring grass, it will enter. It will enter. Because all he knows is man, see the grass, it will enter the trap. But the deer wants to be outside. If he gets into that trap, he's thinking of how can I get out? How can I get out? How can I get out? He's not thinking of food. Turn to your neighbor. See neighbor. Are you like a gazelle or a goat? I'm sure you are like a gazelle. Uh -huh. Somebody shout amen. amen. So God created animals with different characters. That is how he also created human beings. Each human being has a personality. And sometimes our personalities conflict one with another. Who understands what I'm saying? But he has called us to assume the personality of the Holy Spirit. So when the Holy Spirit lives inside us, and we have the character of Christ, it's easier for us to relate one to another. Remember, the Holy Spirit is a person. The anointing is his personality. The anointing is who he is. That's his personality. So God has made each of us different, just like the animals are different. Even within the same species of animals, they are different. You can see a happy dog and an unhappy dog. But you must go to God and say, God, I want to be what you have made me to be. 